The win streak continues for Team Heretics. They are just one map away from a grand finals here at Master Shanghai. I'm Ying Sun. I've got Mimi and Doug with me uh, uh, here once again. You guys, if this was the best of three, they would have beaten G2. <laughs> and that's a rarity. Two back to map. Massive map wins here for Team Heretics. This crowd has been behind them the whole way, and everyone was up on their feet for that win. It's a second dominant map they've taken now in this series. It just feels like their time has arrived. Right, the memories of Madrid, they're gone. They're, they're forgotten at this point. For them to be able to dominate the way that they have here with what's before them, it it feels like this is their time. Their time is now. They've learned, they've learned. And I'm glad you said you mentioned the crowd, Mimi, because Benji Fishy, he seems like a fan favor here. So let's take a look at him in the aim lab shoot around. And Benji was doing very well on that map. They all were doing well. It just feels like there's no weak uh, weakness right now for Team Heretic. Yeah, it feels like there's nothing to hang your hat on. There's nothing to like draw a little bit of hope from. It just feels like from top to bottom, every single person is shooting. Wood is just breaking the game on the way it's supposed to be played. Like, there's, there's, there's very little to no hope here. Yeah, and I mean, when you're talking about playing as a team and being so good together, I think Benji is the linchpin of that. They're playing a lot of these late retakes on Icebox. I think Benji on the defense does such a good job of finding his timing to get his one kill, get his two kills, then get out, find the next moment to regroup with the team, and also to isolate that guy coming in on the dive. Round after round, they were getting the opening kills. Team Heretics was playing from advantages, and Benji, and especially Woot, were such a big part of that. I'm glad you said he broke the game because I'm with you. I th I'm convinced of the game no longer works because of work because here he is in the Verizon high speed moment. It's so effortless. This is what is crazy. It's just feels like it's nothing to him. He does make it look easy. I think this last kill was the most satisfying. That one right there on the IC. Like it's just sublime. He's he's so you mentioned it earlier, Mimi, when we were talking when we were looking at his clip on Vine. He's just so fast. Yes. How many times did we see him push up B long and just like half a step, one tap? And again, Jonathan look, he, his crosshair is not on that last player's head. That is a flick. And, and it's not like a massively like impressive 90 degree flick, but the, his like tiny micro adjustments in his aim are so clean. You never see him over flick. You never see him over adjust. His like his mouse control is like absolutely ridiculous. The talent this guy has is out of control. I mean, we have uh, potentially one more map left, maybe even three maps left. I'm just going to voice this into the universe so it does not happen again because against Fnatic, Heretics, they went up on Sunset, they went up on Bind, and then they lost Lotus, Split, and then Breeze to get reversed. Up. Does this sound familiar looking at this map all you guys? Yeah, look, ring, rings a bit of yeah, a bell. Yeah. I'm just voicing into the universe. I've said it now, it's not going to happen. It's Surely. impossible. Surely. It yes, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. But though. hear me, if they can just win this one cleanly and finally get a 3-0, it would be so big. Think of every yeah. map yep. where they're they're having to play the late game or they're losing to a comeback to a team like G2, choking that final versus Fnatic, being the first team in the region to be reverse swept. I feel like they could put all that behind them if they just win, win this Lotus. last map. Yes, they have to win yeah, Lotus. Yeah, just win Lotus, get the monkey of G2 off your back, get Madrid off your back, and again, the reverse sweep. All of these things are kind of coming to a head right now here in front of the biggest stage uh, that Valorant has had. So this, again, almost feels like Heretics can't let this one go. And I'm not saying that in like a cursey way or whatever. It's not going to happen. Nonsense. Yeah, it just, again, it doesn't seem like there's anything that G2 have shown that's like, okay, they're doing that well. They can capitalize on, they can build off of it. There's nothing there. When we've watched G2 throughout the tournament, I, I've always been the most impressed with their trading, their fundamentals, and how they play as a team, especially in chaotic mid rounds, when the rounds get scrappy, when things get weird, they tend to do a great job of setting each other up for success and finding the right swings to play as a team. I have not seen that be up to the same level thus far in this series. They are getting picked apart by individuals. And goddamn, are the individuals impressive. What Wood is doing is unreal. But still, there are fundamental mistakes. I think the micro comms are off a little bit. G2 really has to rally if this they want to stay thing. in this. On the other side of, the, of this, though, Doug, what if they could make it happen? What do they have to do on Lotus if they could do what Fnatic did? Uh, I think the calling has to be exceptional uh, from Balan. Here's the, the thing about this map, and I'm, I'm kind of worried about this, but again, if it's going to happen, it could happen here. Lotus can be such a swingy map. How often do we see 9-3s into 13-10s? You know, something like sure. that. Like, it's not 
out of the realms of possible. And I think, again, I, I want to bookend what we talked about at the beginning of the show up until now. Valon has to be able to call a good game here, given that it's three maps, given that conditioning matters so much more. Yeah, I mean, the last time that this got played, it's actually been played in, in both these series between these two teams. Team Heretics won at 13-9 the first time. The second time was after uh, they let that comeback happen on Ascent, and they got absolutely stomped 13-4. I don't think that's an indictment of their strategic approach to Lotus. I think that was them being mentally boomed. But strategically, this team is really sound here. Boo's attack side mid-rounding, I think, is on point. Woot, as he is on every map, is excellent on the executes in how they set him up. But I have been impressed with G2's defense throughout this tournament. And I think starting on the defense, you really need something early. You cannot let this Team Heretic squad snowball another early lead. I mean, if it's anyone, we said this before, that could potentially make this happen, that are resilient enough and are skilled enough and have done it before, Doug, it is G2. They have the answers. Yeah, I think part of the problem, though, is, you know, we talked about how we can't let heretics get a strong start. We can't let them snowball. They've done that, right? It, it's too late at this point. It doesn't feel but like... every map is a reset. Every map is a reset. They've proved their mental before, but it is going to be really the most difficult test here in front of this crowd. It will be indeed. We're going to take a look at Agent Select in just a moment for Lotus. Of course, this is where Heretic let it slip the last time they played a best of five. But this time around, like you guys have said, I think they've learned from it. They know what not to do, at least. I think IC also needs to be able to step up in a big way. I mean, honestly, look down the, do, look down across the stage, right? Like, go across all five members and somebody needs to be a spark. Because you're, you're staring down the barrel of this miracle run coming to an end in the most tragic way possible where you're just getting obliterated across three maps. It would be the worst way for, for, for this to end for G2. Both these teams are very familiar with each other on this map. We heard it in that interview from Neil. They've played each other twice before. It is so rare in a tournament to see back to back to back matches against the same team. So again, you have to look back to Valon, to Boo. Now that they've learned their opponent's tendencies, now that they know them so well, how can they themselves vary their style, try new things, and maybe pull this off? Yeah, and here we are, the agents are like, what do you guys make of this? I mean, nothing nothing too surprising, right? Like, it looks like Team Heretics might be going for some switches within the specific roles, but still, it's the default comp. Both these yeah. teams really know how to play this quite well. Uh, Rian's on that fade in particular is a guy who's always impressed me. I think him and Woot together are great. It doesn't feel like G2 have found their footing from the very first round of this series. And I'm concerned about Heretics starting off on attack because they're going to be able to continue to dictate the pace. There's a really good chance they have a big lead going into half, not just because of the teams that are playing, but because of the map itself. G2 need to concede less opening kills. I think we've seen it in the maps in this series thus far and in the past on their Lotus, where players like Leaf and Icy will go for some of these forward things, go for jump peaks, and we've seen them get caught off before, which is, gives massive opportunities for Heretics to snowball as they have thus far this series. Yeah, and for me, not having the Cypher and switching over to the Killjoy as well is super, super interesting. They've always ran the Breach as well. G2, they like to do their homework. This is going to be a bit of a surprise for them too. Uh, so I can't wait to see what how they're going to respond to this because if they don't, they will be eliminated here at Master Shanghai. They will not have a chance in that Grand Finals and Heretics will be going through again, like you guys both said, not the team that anybody expected to make a final. Yeah, and I mean, we're so used to, to Seeing this default comp, it caught me off guard for a second. But you're right, the, the, the breach fade that they've always played on here has been great. I think they had a lot of really unique setups that they do with that. But I think you can play in some ways in a, in, in a similar way, right? You can set up with the fade. But really what this comp gives you is a lot better stall on your defense when you're switching over to that killjoy. And also, that kind of lets Benji be a little bit more flexible on his attacking side too, right? You don't have that cam to hold heavy for your four ones, but now you might see more like strong side hits, more of that kind of really heavy team play setup. It's a good change to throw this late in the tournament. Yeah, because I mean, how would you expect it? You can't expect that. So I can't wait to see what G2 are going to do here. Achilles and Paper Thin. Let's see if Heretics can close this one out 3-0. Let's see indeed one more map. It's all that Heretics need to get themselves into that grand final tomorrow, another best of five for this squad that has looked absolutely on fire throughout these first two maps. It feels that there is little hope for G2. However, 
This team has shown time and time again that there is no give up. There is no let go. They will fight tooth and nail. And they destroyed Heretics on this map the last time they played. They're going to be starting on that defender side where they had a hot 8-4 and four start. Push out from IZ. They catch a lot of damage onto Benji, yeah. Knocked down to 45. Patty too. Just a huge start there. That's such a huge advantage in a pistol round. And now, a thought about B, but it's actually the door being opened. And this puts Icy in such a bad position where Woot is able to collect. Trent with a pullback. Gets himself out to safety, but does get tagged down to 78. Sees at the ready, gonna be sent, gets no catch. As Boo will be able to get him taken out. The C site now opened up. And the early damage advantage absolutely stripped away. Double flank for Valen and Jonah P. Here. Leaf on the other side. Benji. Oh, he's already dealt with. Jonah P one. finds him. Double flank coming out now through Mount. Everybody clustered up together here from the side of Heretics. It's an absolute wall. Swing onto the corner. The spam looking good. Jonah P gonna be taken down. Won't be able to find that kill now. It's all on Leaf. Pushes up into the smoke and Woot somehow nails the headshot. Heretics, another pistol round win. I mean, this mid-rounding here from Heretics is so good. It looks like G2 has them in dire straits off the rip with so much damage being done by the paint shells. But it's a great call to stack three at the door, and they catch Icy completely flat-footed. He has no hope. And then they do some damage on the way in, clear out another player. And even though Benji goes down, that alerts him to the lurk. They're able to double stack the door from Mound and shut G2 out of a, yet another pistol. Another deep paint shell going out. Taking a little bit of damage to Spook himself. Push across to the opposite side here. More presence, and they just spray in, they find two. Fish in a barrel. They could do no wrong. They are just absolutely on fire with their reads. Paranoia clears the back of mound, but Nobody home there. Making sure the box is clear as well. Get Woot fast-tracked to an early showstopper. To that big 3K start. He is going to be three away now from having a potential bonus showstopper available. And all this space being taken by Patty Tech. Just waiting at the door. Slide up, Patty Tech. Quick to readjust. Quick to shut them down. Orb taken. Woot just two away from that showstopper. Spike will be intended to be planted here. It's Trent going to be looking for a timing, but it's being launched. Rien. Oh. Rien's is just so very much aware of this. They get the reveal. They will take. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Flawless round. Even Woot capable of whipping a couple shots. But it's all good. 2 0. Flawless. Everything carried over. And it's another solid start. And now the showstopper is online. Unbelievable for Heretics. They, they just are swinging and rarely missing. Okay, yeah, a few shots missed there. But the overall game plan, the overall strategy is phenomenal for them. Contested C, take advantage of the space that Patty Tech gained you over on A. Patty Tech so clean with those that ghost. This time around, a little bit of extra U-tilt, sending the Prowler out to make sure that Mound not going to have any unwelcome surprises for Team Heretics. They have such a fearsome bonus coming through. Having to play so far back or G2. Look at where they are, all the way in Waterfall because they know that the showstopper's coming. Yep, just gonna send it. Had to take at the same time, able to find Jonah P, that late lurk. Right outside, that B connector, he's able to find the kill. Leaf wanting the jewel peak, but oh, yep, getting a spot of it. Put a couple shoulders in. Couple shots into his shoulder. Oh, this is so difficult. G2 knows there's a flank coming and they're trying to get ahead of it, but it's gonna be so tough. He's not connecting. Paint shells, little value. Paranoia will crash across. Will find two. The wound holding, able to find one. He's an answer back from Valen, but now it's just these two players on the line. Blast pack up on top of the side, proper the swing out. Valen able to shut that down. Woot gonna be held at bay. The time's starting to dwindle, and Patatech now arriving. About to make his presence known. The snake bite gonna be thrown down. Valen, he's so damn low, he's so damn dead! Patatek plays it slow! 
And Heretics crush once again. And this is something that has been killing G2, is losing a player early. And even when they get the first kill, sometimes they've still been not able to convert, but this right here opens up the map so much, and it forces G2 to have to really press. And even though they're able to use a good paranoia to buy some space, get some kills, it's not enough to get the job done. And Patty Tech there with a beautiful snake bite. Reads that situation beautifully and continues to be an absolute menace. Shadows traveling. Full Sheriff's one stinger here for the side of G2. Trying to pull off a thrifty. Get themselves on the board nice and early. Wanting to avoid the trend that we've been seeing. Sleep the peek out. Shot there onto Benji Fishy, but he's able to backpedal. Now Smoke has to come out just so they can go ahead and pull away as well. Got mount control, but a weak buy. Not much they can do off of it right now. So they're gonna try to back up towards the safety of the Killjoy utility that Leaf has if there is going to be a C hit. And once again, Patty Tech is slipping through the defenses of G2. Made his all the way, made his way all the way to the baby door. Once again, they call in the reinforcements, but this time. G2 is holding the line. Wu able to dodge that haunt. And that's going to send a few players starting to drift different directions. However, well, doubling ball back. The corral. Yeah. yeah. Taking their way forward. Maybe trying to audio bit a little bit there and make them think that the site has been evacuated. Made to the back either way. Eventually finding some decent damage here. Patatek going to be held by the Seize, but Wu able to still find one. Patatek getting another. Fallon, a headshot. Icy with one himself. Swing forward. He just can't get that reload off in time. Leap now, last one alive versus three. Spike collected and the plant will come through. 10 seconds left. So difficult. So difficult for Leaf. Spots him with that weapon. Just out of reach. Cannot collect it, will get taken down. Some kills found still, certainly some fight in them, but Team Heretics now four to zero. Uh, it was some pretty good util usage there, especially from Trent. It's a great seize. Stalls as much as he can. Gives at least some hope to G2 in this round. You see three players caught by it. And they're able to get two kills. Then Patty Tech, who is picking up right where he left off on Icebox. Tremendous 7-0 start. One away, excuse me, two away from a Viper's Pit. And look at Woot, halfway to another showstopper already. And the alts are just starting to come into cycle here for G2. Icy with that orb grab, one away himself. Util at the front door. See if they can bait that out. Right set. Oh, oh the TP up. What? Leaf ready for it. Finds that kill. And now Nano Swarm able to tear Wood apart. But if he just repositioning, getting himself in alongside places patiently. No one checking for him. And he's able to get both. Gives him in with a pinch. And as Valen arrives, a headshot connects. And G2 will find that first round win. Yeah, Heretics goes for a pacey play, but. They hadn't really identified the Killjoy defensive setup that Leaf was going to be using, and they fall prey to it. One taken down by the Nano. Boo just TPs into his death. A little bit over, uh, over eager there from Heretics, but the confidence is flowing, and you can go for plays like that when you're four rounds ahead to start a map. You can go for plays like that when you're two maps ahead in a match to see if you can just brute force your way through your opponents, break them. Both mentally, spiritually. Oh, oh Icy. What a pick. A fantastic catch. Shades of what Texture was doing to them on this very map. Good opener. Petatech not allowed to find value here in this round. Not allowed to assist his squad, but Heretics overall still have been decent about fighting back when they have these disadvantages. And it's tough now for Heretics because that showstopper is in play. So they're being very, very cautious, trying to figure out where exactly Icy moved over to, seeing if they Careful. can avoid losing a player, at the very least exchanging off that powerful ult. That's a big confirmation there for Trent. He's got that Odin too. Rien's Benji Fishy already dinged up, who as well. I just want to try to overwhelm him. Meanwhile, TP over stairs? towards stairs, but yep, going to be interrupted, intercepted. Valen wise to it, denies that flank. In the meantime, sandwiching forward, but not really taking too much space. Jonah at the ready, bite in hand. 
Tell that left hand side. Thirty coming seconds down. Left. The paranoia. Crashing across, connecting on to leave the perfect time, but Wu also being connected on. The rocket comes flying out, and that's gonna be the raises. Traded out. Leaf still here. Still standing strong. And Jonah P now making his position. Aware to the other team. Who hoarded two? G2 hanging in there. And they're just doing such a good job of denying any opportunities for Team Heretics to create space on the map. Every angle they try to take is immediately shut down and right off the rip. That sets the tempo. Yeah, you lose the showstopper, but that's okay. You got the read. That allows Leaf to spray through onto Benji Fishy. Getting a lot of info. <laughs> he tried to, Jonah. He tried. You denied it. Another uh, to the Pacey take, the push out. What? Oh, so readjusts! Icy taken down! It's just when G2 feel like they're finding their footing, finding their groove. Who does that? That's bananas. The fact that he turns on that is insane. I mean, we saw it from Trent earlier, but that is such a huge moment for Team Heretics because they maintain control of Rubble. But look at where Jonah P has gotten to. He's gotten all the way towards spawn, tucked into the corner. And coming down, suspecting that somebody could have that forward linger, but they won't give it the time of day. Yeah, you can see Rian's watching for this Just quietly, not wanting to make any noise. Oh, Leaf ready with the lockdown. Just if there's any pressure at B. He knows the paint shell has already been expanded. Lockdown now coming through. Fantastic timing play here for the side of G2. Once again, flushing them back. Jonah P, does he want to try to go for any kind of swing out here? Once again, flush against the wall. Here's them shifting away, shifting in towards A. As he swings the corner, he's not going to be able to get a catch. Third recalled. An alarm bot set up for him. The flank going to be noted. But time starting to run low. 20 seconds remaining as they get their entry oh. here onto the site. Valency peeing out. Keeps himself safe because that paranoia crashes across. Spike planted. Welcome Set up here in the drop. Swing out of the corner. But oh, oh, five, two more! Wound dead! But it might not matter! The pit's in play! It's unfair. Unbelievable. The clear out. The double swing. Leaf trying to That's isolate, trying to pick off any of them. Who tucks back, draws the attention, and Rienz collects the kill. Now well, Jonah, this guy who's been putting up incredible clutch performances throughout the tournament. This one just a bridge too far. The odds completely stacked against him. Just has to let this spike detonate and let Heretics get themselves up to five. Unbelievable. I mean, again, it's one of these rounds. Oh, Boo dies with spike. Yeah. That was fine. It do be like that. But again, one of these rounds where I'm kind of okay with what G2 does, it's just they get beat by better shooting. And it's Boo this time who's stepping up to the plate and knocking it out of the park. I mean, shutting down that rubble push is insanity. I mean, he clears the haunt. He's looking over. Oh my God. The second bullet goes so, right to the head. So lazy fan from him. Just. Yeah. Casual, hands up. casual hands little up. flick over to the side. <laughs> Some of the rest of the team not having it. No touching. But now <laughs> we've got the timeout call here once more for G2. It's, it's insane. It just feels like Heretics is so ready, and they had a triple stack on that angle that Pooh got that double kill on. So they're so prepared for every push out that G2 wants to make. Every move that G2 seemingly feels like they can take and that swing out of drop crumbles and so does the round behind it. It's it's insane. Uh, this Heretics team playing like monsters. Scary as hell. Down but not yet out. G2. A three round deficit. Starting on the defending side here of Lotus. Yeah, Chance someone <laughs> to still run this back if they can find a couple more round wins, get themselves into a good position at the half. Someone call the Inquisitors because the Heretics are running wild. Unbelievable. There. Another good ready. Yeah, this is. There's no raise here though for Team Heretics. This is all just a bit of a fake to kind of keep the extra forces that G2 planted us a moment longer. I would expect that you would want to go for a pacey hit. But for now, 
Maybe just an orb grab. As Leaf has abandoned the site, smoke the door. Have delayed things enough that G2 is getting forces into place relatively quickly. And yeah, Team Heretics just can't find the opportunity that they want. That smoke, well timed by Valen. The door open. Have to account for that angle from B. Looking for those quick rotates from G2, our Heretics. And we're going to be coming through. Now they have to spread the map a little bit more, reestablish, or try to reestablish control for themselves. Haunt out. No contact Dawson's off of it. Still. Down. Trent goes for the spray. Actually, just a slight bit delayed. But no matter which way you slice it, as soon as G2 realizes that C Warp is going to be taken, it's either the showstopper or that nightfall on the opposite side. It's going to be it's an opening spray. Nearly takes out Boo. Oh my god. Nearly takes out Rams. They're both down. 10 HP, 11 HP. Solid damage dealt there. 30 seconds left. Saving them off and forcing them back over towards C. Where Icy is able to get ahead of this nightfall. Push up through the poison orb. Icy collecting two. Knows that Moon is just on the other side of the box and he gets it. The three pieces, the door once again tapped, just constantly revolving. Rance backing away from the alarm bot. Ten seconds left. Oh Man can come through. Paddock oh Tech here God. at upper. Needs to do the lion's share of the work. Sees to try to slow things up. Push it! No! Managed to collect two! But now he's all in his lonesome. One HP! Certainly impossible, but no! He fights back! Looking for the ace clutch. Jonah P, the slow great bow arm. How does he do it? He is on his feet! The crowd erupts! As Paddy shuts it down! Unbelievable! Unthinkable! I'm speechless! This is just disgusting! Gets the one, gets the two on that angle! And then, just down to one HP, Valen has him. Dead to rights, but Valen can't get him in time, and then he just spins, and he's ready. He just tucks in the corner and takes him down. And Paddy Tech is perfect! It's 13 and two, and you can see G2 knows that should have been theirs. That should have been maybe the turning point in this map. But instead, Heretic's run of absolute brutality just continues. They're unholy. Just bottomless energy and haymakers in every single round. And the desk we're talking about at each map, a reset. You forget about the past, you just look at the present, you focus on the game at hand. But that is one of those rounds that sends everything that's happened in this series thus far echoing back through the minds of every single player on G2. Exactly. Patatek, hungry for that final, hungry to send another America's representative home. And that might have just been the final straw. G2, all timeouts, burnt. Can they rally back? I mean, what do you do? Again, not, not playing anything poorly, RG2. It's just Team Heretics is so on form. Okay, that's a good opener for Trent. Double face, and that's going to be Patatek taken down. Solid advantage. Spike going to be scooped up. Still have that showstopper, though, for Woot. Trent, though, nightfall for a potential retake. If this does continue to be a C hit, Leaf left on his lonesome on the C site. That U tilt right at the front. Woo there has to check the corner. They get both the nanos popped, they get the alarm bot cleared. So there's a good opportunity now for Heretics to maybe spread the map. They've baited out a bunch of utility. They know that there's no more KJ U tilt, except for maybe the turret. And he used the. Uh, yeah. Nobody Still available. The entry. Yeah. Going deeper, looking for a target, sends it, and he nearly finds Trent down to 13. Just on a gamble. It's like now there's G2 getting closer, getting ready for the attempted retake. It's gonna be the nightfall to try to start things off. Chills out, spray across, Woot gonna be taking down, Leaf able to find it, Balan with the stinger. Cleans up Rianz, but Boo. Still here, Benji fishing in a more disconnected position, playing back over towards Mount, but now he's all on his lonesome. Huge. It looks like the timeout working a treat. Benji Fishy it would have to be back-to-back -back ace clutches to die this one away. He finds the first to swing out. He'll get himself a second. 
Damage still dealt. Some of these players from G2 not having too much cash, but they will get the round win. Yeah, and uh, once again, these early wins at A main, at A rubble, are really impactful for G2 and how they want to work the map. It, it makes it so much more difficult for Heretics to spread the map to get a player lurking like Patty Tech. Enemy remaining. They have to go for these kind of slower executes towards the C site. They're very happy to wait them out. Showstopper dodged enough. That Nightfall hits two players. I was kind of curious about Heretics there if they were going to send three back to mound. Paranoia off the rip. I see. A very important position. Jiggle Peak giving him quite a bit of info. Benji going to be tagged down to 30. I see himself. All shots connecting. So much util use. You've got the lockdown. Trying to create space for it. But you're not really able to find enough comfort just yet. Especially with Trent. Still holding the baby door angle. He's going to be backed off by the Prowler. But tricky, tricky position for Heretics to be in. Is this just going to be a B pivot? Right into the heart of Leafs utility. Continue towards A. Oh, they're going oh, through stairs. Towards stairs. A forward position. That's where they want the lockdown to go through. They want to completely envelop this site, and they have. No real hope to try to take this one down. So everybody just having to pull back, having to respect this ultimate. As the spike now gets brought forward into the site, will be planted. Leaf is well noted. Spike planted. Yeah. Quick clear on the turret. Slow down. Benji Fishy, though, aware of this positioning. Leaf, does he think they just go ahead and try to go bang the box? He does not. Benji Fishy nails the headshot. Snake fight. Gonna go a little bit too deep. Benji not held at bay. Tries to flick up. Still puts Icy down low, but now Showstopper online. Trying to lead the charge, but Rian's peaks. Finds the kill. Now Patty takes strikes from stairs. Trent dead. Last and everything will be done now by Valen, the IGL, the captain. Seems like he's just gonna be going down with a ship. Finds one, but the time is just not available to him. But Patty Tech cannot find that elimination. Swing out of the smoke and Valen, he's fine with the frags, but he cannot find that round win that they so desperately need. Spike erupts. He and Rienz will go their separate ways, but Heretics continue to stretch the lead. Yeah, I mean, they're so good at getting through these tough situations, getting themselves to that position where they can use that lockdown. So aware of their space. So aware of what they need to do, and Benji Fishy wins a huge 1v1 over by the box and able to buy a lot of extra time and attention. And then Heretics get their, get their players into positions where they can shut down that lock, that showstopper instantly re-ends right there. Johnny on the spot to make sure that there's no hope for G2 in this half. And it is going to be at the very least a positive affair for Heretics on their attacker side. One away from a Viper's Pit is Patty Tech. Two away from another Nightfall is Rien. Um, okay, there you go, okay. that works. It goes up over the top. Yeah. I go with the path I would have expected, but Boo able to find two. I mean, the man is just murdering over at A. He's by himself, the rest of the team's playing outside of C. And he just massacres them. <laughs> I mean, there's just... Shadows traveling. It feels like there's no hope for G2. It feels like Team Heretics has come into today with impeccable mechanics. Fourth, you got it. Cheese Louise. Cannot be denied, cannot be put down. Round before the switch. We'll have to see the replay to see exactly how everything unfolded. As we get ready to go into the last round of the half. One down. One. Great spot there. Okay. Here it is. Oh, just oh. One by one they push and one by one they fall. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I mean, they're just so, so strong. And again. And never has the word boo been more terrifying than it is today. <laughs> Look at now. They've got the Odin for the spam. Oh! Well, wow, hey, the timing. Get out. Doesn't even take that much damage from it. Yeah, great timing on that TP. Fantastic stuff. So hit used over at C to try to barricade Heretics from getting in towards that site. Jonah P all alone. Certainly gonna swing out, you would think. Just gonna hold the edge. See if he can catch him off guard. Maybe they don't clear that angle, but instead 
Heretics opts to try a different direction. I mean, this Three. is a double stack, very far forward. Triple stack, in fact. They're Didn't even out. notice that Balan behind them. G2 taking a taking a play out of under Thieves book there, stacking players on top of one another. Turret Face, gets a little bit of info. Nightfall doesn't hit anything. You know you've got some space cleared. Leaf may be flirting with playing out of the smoke, but Ops will just wait this out. He has to, he just has the outlaw trying to get an angle. It's gonna be so very difficult. Boom! He still snaps, he still gets one! Filthy. It looks like he's dead, so right. He looks like he's not responding, but he still finds that kill. Who now getting lean. Rian's already with Jonah Pace, swings out and will be shut down. 2v3. But it is. Okay. It's difficult to see how G2 could potentially get this round to try to make it 8 and 4 at the half. That's like having to back away. Angel landing near his feet, but time is dwindling. It is not on their sides. Kenji spotting the first, knows the other's within the pit, and Wu will take him down with a shorty. Nine and three at the half, G2 on their last legs. It's bombastic, it's brutal, it's brilliant. Team Heretics are in cruise control to go to the grand finals. What is that is disgusting. They are just hitting unbelievable shots today. And the reaction timing is just absolutely out of this world. What do you do? You die. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, that is the answer. But now, nine and three at the half, we'll pass this back over to the analyst as to break down the action. Thank you very much, Achilles and Paper Thin Heretic. They're so, so close to that grand final and they've been playing so, so well. The consistency throughout these three maps, Mimi, is incredible. It's been excellent from this Team Heretic squad thus far. This third map, again, they have come out swinging on this attacking side. Boo, I think, is calling some great mid-rounds, but really what you have to look at is all of these late round moments, the ace clutch from Pad Attack, the multi-kills from Boo. Every member of this team is right to the occasion and even when it feels like they shouldn't be able to get away with anything I think about I think that was round 11 boo looked like he was asleep it looked like he was looking at the mini map or really not paying attention somehow just blindly turns manages to get a one tap anyway and I think it's just so difficult for a team to respond to something like that when it feels like everything is going against you heretics I think it was Seth who said it it feels like cruise control and there's no stopping this vehicle right now. This team is so incredibly full of confidence. They have no doubt that they are going to win this series. And to put that in perspective is insane. Both these teams came in with low expectations, but for Team Howard, it's playing with a sub, having to rebuild their ideas without a key player, having to adapt throughout this game, and having to play G2 three times. And now in the match that matters most, up nine to three, they're only four rounds away from their first international finals. I mean, they beat everybody else to get here. G2 are the only team they actually even lost to in this tournament, and they're about to get their revenge. They're about to get another grand final. But for G2, it's not over until it's over. You guys like to say this, so I'm gonna send it back to Seth and Clint and see if G2 can get themselves back into this game. Well, it all has to start going into this pistol, something that has very much been eluding them thus far in this series. Team Heretics collecting the lion's share of those ever important rounds. And what's insane, I mean, Woot has been wonderful today. Absolutely incredible stuff that he's able to do on those duelists. But Patty Tech, the six man coming in, has been absolutely pounding these last couple maps. Oh yeah. He is destroying G2's hopes and dreams. Woot now forward space, gets the ding, gets the finisher, and he gets the hell out. IGL on the floor. They're just different today. They are just different. See if Fallon here in this pistol can pull off an Angel Masterclass, or if it's all gonna continue to spiral out of control. He took back at Bend. Shots opening up, he swings the corner, cannot reset for that third elimination, but still does find Icy. Two players now left alive. Spike recovered. Leaf trying to Leap. open things up over here at A. Finds one. Wants to go for the challenge. Spots him. Kills him. As Leaf keeps him in this pistol round. That's massive. I mean, Leaf has been a hero for G2 so many times this event. Able to come up with these big moments that can break rounds open. And he needs to do it more now than ever. 
tag down to 50, but able to back away. Keeps himself Tyler alive. Destroyed. Spike now arriving. Plant getting ready to come through. Leaf drifting across the site. Working his way over towards Drop, where he wants to try to take Last a peek. And he's not quite ready for it. Boo. The instant headshot, the kill found. Tuck back into the smoke. Gonna pee up over oh the top, no. but the timing is found. They swing out. They get the kill. They get the round. Heretics up to 10. Seemingly the beginning of the end, Achilles. What a start there. I mean, doing so many things right. Obviously, it helps when Woot is hitting shots like that. And then they're able to set up this crossfire that's so deadly from Waterfall and Waterfall in the back site. Leaf doing everything possible, getting those two kills, able to get the spike over to the other side. But Boo has been so clean. He's 14 and 7 on this map. He has hit some disgusting shots and he opens up the drop spot. And then it's just a bit of a misread from Jonah P. Typically so good in those yeah. moments, but seemingly now the pressure, the situation, the moment getting to him in G2. Once again, forward space taken over here at Mound. And it's backing away, but Woot gonna remain on that line. Has a Guardian in hand to try to shut it down. Marshall to potentially be able to out-trade him. Needs to be the headshot. Do they United. opt to go for this? Same time, double push up here from G2. His shot's gonna be exchanged. The damage not found. Bit of space taken here as G2 tried to scale up towards A. A Killjoy utility as well. There's uh, Patatech there, waiting in tree. The all according to plan. Four team heretics. They'd love to funnel yeah. G2 over towards that A side if possible, but right now, the strong side is A for G2. 3-2 yeah. split. Just trying to see if they can fish out one of those players over on C. Three players here, though. So even if you're able to buy some attention, still have the KJ util. Still have Patty Tech to deal with with the Stinger. Ooh. Playing forward, but it's gonna be Woot. Find the first, can't reset it. Take down Leaf, but he will fall. A headshot across Patatech. He's ripping apart Icy down to 43. Himself eating a little bit of damage with Benji Fishy behind. Fire Tree's got the covering eight. fire. Fallon thinking that maybe he's gonna get a free kill. But nothing in this series has been free. Oh no. Icy finding one, but Patatech still holding the door. 11 rounds. Two more to go. Team Heretics storming their way towards that final. I mean, Heretics does not give an inch over to G2. Other than maybe Mound, but everything that they do there is intentional. Let them take a little bit of extra space and then shut them down. That, that hold in tree is so good for Patty Tech. You don't expect a second player to be in there. And Benji Fish, Benji Fishy is waiting to just go for the bait. And it's hook, line, and sinker. Team Heretics on a bonus. Guardian and a Vandal, the big weapons, the big heavy hitters that they have available in their arsenal. Old rifles for G2. Certainly they can get this round. Are you expecting that jiggle peak? He's right for it, but cannot find the shots. In fact, takes more damage than he delivers. Just so ready. So quick to react, our heretics. Now they're gonna sneak Patty Tech into another corner. Try to see if they can bait this out. But right now, G2's attention is firmly towards A, as there's been no contestion of space around this orb, no contestion towards Rubble. And that, that has to have alarm bells ringing in your head. And look at this, there's just a complete crossfire set up. Smoke does go down, Prowler out. Door open, here we go. First contact here for Benji Fishy. He's going to be taken down by Patatech with the singer at range. Still able to find Jonah Ping. Fallon finding one. Push forward. Woot not going to be good for the kill. Just weakens him a bit. The plant coming through. Four players still alive here on the side of G2. Woot upper. Guardian in hand. Rian's pushing his way through Link. Oh, Weapon afraid. recovered. See if you can put it to use. The swing out, noting one, backs off. Very about a very deep flank. One that will not be found. Now 
looking to pan out here from the side of G2. This round just seems unwinnable for Team Heretics, who needing to take some space, needing Last to find some kills, standing. but Rian's gonna be taken down and he will not be able to find Leaf. Four players left alive, G2 found a, a fourth round win. For what it's worth, it's a good win. You keep four guns, able to get a little bit of an economy going, but not that that's actually gonna matter too, too much. Where are because it's only two rounds that Team Heretics would need. So maybe some confidence. That's probably the best thing you could take out of this round is G2. And, you know, maybe if you could start stringing four or five together in a row, then it's gonna be in G2's minds that, hey, we've done this before. We've come back from worse, but certainly there is a long, winding road ahead of them. Aunt not gonna reveal anything. That alarm bot out way deep on mound there. Or Benji Fishy. Placing swap grenade. The turret as well. It's gonna be cleared. There doesn't really seem to be any follow-up. The nano's gone as well, so all of Benji's fishy utility, just information gathering at best. And now he's already pivoting. He's abandoning the C site quickly. There. And still continuing with this lack of contestion for rubble for Team Heretics at the beginning of the round. They're stacked towards B again. Trying to see if they can find tendencies of G2 to be given that space at A when they find contestion right past the orb, then they pivot over towards B potentially, but looks like it's a full on swing towards C. Still arm bot to alert. Yep. Four is an orb admitted. Goes off now. You That's should be. The rotation starting to come through here for the side of Heretics. Still have Woot quite far away. The lockdown buys a lot more time. Yeah, there's plenty of opportunity now for Team Heretics to try to See? spread the map a little bit. Trying to take a forward position. Paranoia going to be coming through. Pain Shell not going to be used. Just gives up that space. Pulls back away. That's great. You baited out a big piece of this retake. Haunt in. Spotting nothing. Pain Shell's a try and delay. Still available to him. As Rand starts making his way through. Two players here at Ben. Pain Shell flying down. Trent. Getting spammed out a bit. Trying to go in for the challenge. Had to take up over the top. Able to find the headshot. Time, however, Jonah. taking Jonah P. Slipping the net. Swinging around the back. They're all smoked off, but can he find the timing? He absolutely can! Valor finds three! Rian's finding two, but he just does not have the time available to him. Jonah P. Hearing it. Drops down. Finds the kill. Basically midair. G2 keep themselves in this game. They continue to deny. Match point away from Heretics. Yeah, this is the G2 that we're used to seeing this event, that uses their alt well, and then has follow-up plans behind it. Icy pushing space, gets so much attention, so much extra util. There's no real deep flanks available because Woot really takes his time making sure that there's not gonna be another rotate over towards A. Even after that lockdown's invested, he's just hanging out, he's just waiting. That's that energy though you wanna be seeing. Yep. That talk you wanna be hearing from Valen to try to inspire the players to make them believe. Look, these guys have been through so much in their careers. You know that they still want it. You know that they aren't going to give up. Quite a bit of damage here exchanged between the Omens, but Boot knocked down to 45. Crucially, Valen keeps himself alive after having everything in the kitchen sink thrown at him. There. Once again, though, it's a weaker buy there. for Heretics. Root one away from a showstopper. Rian's one away from a nightfall. So one way or another, you're getting some big alts in the cycle. Even though Trent one away from his, Jonah P a couple away from that Viper's pit. I'll find you. For now, gun advantage. Cleared Benji Fishy trying to use the smoke against him. Oh. Back pedals. A bit of damage going to be found. It's Rian's shifting over to try to reinforce this C site. Trent, orb right in front of him. G2 really slowing down the pace, trying to take the wind out of Team Heretic sails in more ways than one, but it's the map presence. Left. My ult is ready. Yeah, they grab the orb. They're gonna invest the nightfall. Pull back the dodges there, Jonah P. Out lingering there. Out lurking Patatech finds that kill. G Fishy just tucked back. A couple stray shots. Trying to find that elimination. I believe he does get a connection there onto Valen. Now down to 40, but still alive. This is gonna be so difficult. Sheriff Sinistinger and the full rifles. 
Still a little bit of util haunts online for Trent. It's going to be challenging for Heretics to say the least. Off at the ready, the quick clear. Nothing spotted, nothing learned. Swing onto the corner, nicely able to deal with two. Rians and Boo both going to be taken down. Boo just trying to get a wall bank shot. Pain Shell now going to be sent flying. And she fishing out in front of it. For the round already over. Icy collects a third, looking for more. He'll find the fourth. Flawless fashion, G2 continuing to rally back. Okay. It's getting to be game on. Both teams have their rockets in cycle. Rians with that nightfall. So an important round for Team Heretics. They could really stop the bleeding here. And they're going to take a moment to consider it, it looks like. First time out of the series, I believe. For Heretics? Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you're right. Looking for these adjustments. Identifying, yep, we've been here before and we don't want to go through this again. Yeah. You have everything you need to close this series out and head to the grand finals. You do not want to squander this opportunity, of course. But you need to take a moment to rethink how G2 is playing this. I think you need to rethink how you're contesting Rubble. I think you maybe need to give a little bit of extra help to Benji. He's had a bit of a struggle on C site. His util setups are getting read pretty well, cleared out pretty easily by G2. I'd like to see a little bit of a change up, maybe a deeper turret. Maybe the Nano is a little bit further back, like behind the boxes on the way up the stairs towards C if you're gonna do that. Make it a little bit harder for G2 to read that. Let Benji kind of play off that a bit more. Get some of those big explosive multi-kills that we've seen time and time again this year. Because the man is an absolute menace as an anchor. But a lot of times it's been on the Cypher. And on this map previously it had been. This is the first time we're seeing the Killjoy this event for him on this map. So definitely a little bit of an adjustment period for Benji. And it's again this early turret that's really out towards mound. Is he going to try to play off of it or not? The one way's there, set up for him, but so far, G2 taking their time. Let's see if that timeout works a treat, if it's good enough to get Heretics up to 12, up to match point. Quick little drift away here from Benji Fishy, just going to be giving up a little bit more space as the turret does get cleared. Knowing that that showstopper's on the opposite side has to be able to respect that ultimate. My ultimate is ready. Jonah, happy to just go ahead, grab the orb, and get that pit available. And, and you have to be so cautious as G2. That showstopper of Woots could spell disaster. Could be the nail that begins to enter your, your coffin. Oh. Not cleared. Oh, no. He gets oh. spotted. He gets lucky. He's connected. Kill cannot be found. I mean, Shell's not in alongside that fade utility. Now, Leaf gonna be taken down. Peeking over towards B, Patatek able to find a very critical kill. Trent now drifting across, Showstopper in play, but now he's stepping. Benji Fishy up over the wall. Finds that elimination with his talent. Quick to trade it, but now he's dead. Grant taking him out, looking for a second. He's got it. He's got the third. And Heretics have series point. One more round. The grand finals in their sights. Just a beautiful change up here from Heretics. Absolutely love the way that Benji Fishy plays this. He moved his util back, and he was anticipating that showstopper, hit himself behind the pillar, and struck after it was too late to do anything about it. Absolutely insane stuff. And the comeback, seemingly not real for G2. We are so close, and Woot, Still has that showstopper. Benji yeah. Fishy, one away from a lockdown. Patty Tech, one away from a Viper's Pit. So much to work with here for Heretics to shut this one down. All that explosiveness available. The round can come to a very swift conclusion here for either side. Balan in a rough spot, but able to dodge out the line share of that damage. Tucks back, keeps himself safe for now, but still, heavy presence from G2 on this side of the map. Yeah, they're really. Trying to maybe obscure this position of Boo. Seen a couple times this event. That corner has not been checked, and it has caused teams fits. Woot. First the challenge. The swing in the showstopper now to try to hold him at bay. Sends it up close. Great seize. Not that much damage is going to be found, but now he re swings out, fights Trent, trying to be quick for reply. 
4v4. She fish you down to 14. Jonah, pad attack. The Viper's traded. Still into a 3v3. Still in several with that paint shell. Right Ooh. to Benji Fishy's feet takes him out. The plant now boo. Does he go for the swing? The ops not to. The smoke dissipating. The man advantage here. So tense. Cover going out. And no, they clutch no. it up again. The wide swing spotted. Boo faking the quick TP out. As I see works his way forward. He's not showing a pixel. Neither showing anything but Boo able to suss it out. Finds the shot, but now he's dead and Rion's is all alone. Alarm bot set up. Ballon in the corner. He cannot drag it across this time. G2. They stay alive. That may have been the seas of Trent's life. They're able to dodge that showstopper, not give Woot any counterplay, push further forward, because there were so many players there for G2. Phenomenal reactions with their utility. Getting that paint shells kill as well. Very, very nice for Icy. And we go again. The heart, <laughs> the heart still beats for G2. Once more into the breach. But alts building up here. Yeah. For the side of Heretic still. Now the lockdown in play. Paranoia at the ready. Leaf would have been in such a rough spot. Turn their sights now in towards B. For Fallon in a potentially risky position. Here's the TP. He goes for the push. And that's the spike now. Dropped. Three players set on top of it. So we have traded places. Oh, what a nano. Nano gonna be sent. The jump out, the kill, the paint shell, the nano! As G2 continue to fight back. The util has just been absolutely brilliant. G2 has such good reactions right now, but is it gonna be enough to send us to another map? Turret cleared, identi identified. Is Benji Fishy. He is all but dead. Everything sent at him. Prowler, Boombot, the push forward. Icy collecting the final. G2 closing the gap. Four rounds is what is necessary to take us to overtime to keep them in this tournament, in this series. Well, now you've cycled more alts for G2. You've got another showstopper. You still have that Viper's pin for Jonah P. What a util dump. Oh, it's an, it was a, amazing the way they read that. They're like, they're stuck at the door. Great call by Balan. Throw the mollies at their feet. It's great recognition and some laughs. Maybe for the first time for G2. Starting to feel like maybe they can do this. The hope is there. The dream's still alive, but only by a thread. It's a push towards B. Aggressive. Oh, oh, flush against the door, but... Nice return fire. Boo gonna be tagged down to 85. One right now on G2, spotless, pristine. Doesn't do way over towards A. Jonah P moving oh forward, my. just alongside the orb. Taking a decent amount of space. Like door shut. But are they gonna remember back to the pistol when Benji was tucked in a tree like this? Him and Patty Tech worked this position so well. Are they gonna be able to suss this out? Patty starts getting a sense of it. The pit could just come into play immediately. Alarm bot cleared out. Push around the back of the side here. Icy hunting, sends the rocket. Not gonna be able to find that kill. Boom, somehow, setting the aim. Finds a kill and Benji, he's done it again! Trent gets the plan, but now he's in a 1v3. The lockdown in play, and the hopes and dreams of G2 have come to an end. Lightning will not strike thrice in Shanghai. G2 are the ascended ones, but heretics refuse to bow at their altar. What a show in Shanghai here for Team Heretics. A 3-0 to send themselves to the grand finals to square off against Gen G. And it is dominant from the beginning to the end. Team Heretics were in full control of this series. Starting with Woot. So hot today, and then Patty Tech coming alive as the match went on. Brilliant performance, and just unbelievable shooting. It is unbelievable mechanics that are a big part of the equation for Heretics. They make good decisions, they play well off of each other.
but they can win some fights that they have no business winning, and that's the sign of a great team. For G2, few expected them to make it here, to make it this far in the tournament. And this is just the start. From Tier 2 into Ascension, joining Americas, and then getting another international performance appearance for a lot of these players that haven't had it in years. That's fantastic experience for them. Yes. But for Heretics, the journey, the story, it is not yet over. They continue onward. A fast turnaround into a grand final. Another best of five tomorrow. But given the performances seen that were put on display by these players here, I think there is little concern about their odds versus Gen G. Oh, no doubt. This has to be so fearsome. Yeah. Gen G 2 owed. G2, but. Heretics just 3 0 them. Yeah. You gotta be scared if you're Gen G. No doubt Gen G has been incredible. No doubt Gen G will be the favorite. But you cannot sleep on this Heretic <laughs> squad with the form that they showed here today, especially on those first two maps. They are seemingly going to give the Korean team a lot of trouble tomorrow. And yeah, I wanna go back to G2 as well. I mean, what a run they made. I'm so impressed with this team, with everything they've had to go through the last couple of years. Their ability to keep fighting back. How many times did they lose the first map and just fight right the hell back yeah. and win the series? I mean, up until they faced Gen G, they hadn't dropped a series in this event. Coming all the way through Swiss, coming through a difficult America's Gauntlet, falling short against 100 Thieves in a grueling finals. However, there has to be a ton of hope now for this squad going forward. There has to be a ton of hope that they're going to come to champs and make another splash. Yeah, I right, still solid performances from them. Not the series that the Americans fans would have wanted to see, but Heretics, just a different looking squad here today. Absolutely damn near flawless performance from them. But for G2, see how they fare in the future. The sky's the limit for those guys as well. As for Heretics, who get themselves into the grand final, but now let's throw down for the Verizon post-match interview. Team Heretics, they are your Masters Shanghai grand finalists. Before we get into this interview, Mercedes-Benz Arena, show some love to Paratech. How does that feel, Paratech? That's amazing. That's the best thing in my life, legit. 刚刚他问Patitech现在感受怎么样,他说感受真的太棒了,这是我人生当中最棒的瞬间. Now, not many teams uh, have to face the same opponent three times in one tournament. Uh, not many teams have to do that against G2 either, a team that you have a lot of history with. So, uh, how does it feel for you to be able to beat them the moment when it mattered the most to get into the Grand Finals? 其实在这次赛事当中，已经和G2三次见面，进行了三分三番战了。那我们也知道，Patitech选手可能跟G2有一些渊源啊。那现在终于击败了他们，感受怎么样呢？ I think the experience we got from the first two losses uh, built us as a team like incredibly. I think we learned a lot and yeah, it's a, it was the most important game and they crumbled and we didn't. So yeah, it was an easy game. 其实从之前的两次交手,虽然我们失利了,但是我们从中学到了非常多,而今天的比赛我们能够将他们打败,获得了今天的这场胜利。uh, I've been hearing you say this, I'm just a stand-in, I'm just a standing. I, I don't like that fight, it's like, but uh, for those people that don't know, uh, once upon a time when this game first came out, you were one of the best, you know, in Europe, in the world. There was a long time where you didn't even lose a game, but you never really had an opportunity to stand on a stage like this. So what does it mean to you to be able to get in a grand final uh, like this after all of the time you spent grinding? 其实之前Patitech选手经常会说自己啊我是来救急的是替补，但是很多人其实可能不知道，之前Patitech选手其实是非常多选手之中的翘楚，很长时间是一段时间里他都没有输过任场一任何一场比赛。那今天在之前没有
其实之前的那一段时间呢，对于我来说可能是不同的游戏，但是我一直都是非常非常的努力。在这四年之间，我一直在坚持，一直在刻苦。即使有一些队伍可能因为过往的一些历史，并不愿意接受我，但是今天我还是站在了能够去往总决赛的这套这个舞台上、这个道路上，所以我真的感觉非常的兴奋、开心，也很光荣感觉。Well, you have a chance for a trophy as well, not just the grand final, but you have to take down Gen G in order to get that trophy. Everyone else is saying that they're the best team in the tournament. Do you agree? And how do you beat a team like Gen G? 其实现在我们就有机会去到总决赛了嘛，但是你们将要面对的是 G N G， 很多人都说他是最强的一支队伍。那你同意这种说法吗？以及你将会怎样赢下这场胜利呢？ I wouldn't say they are the best team in the tournament. I mean, you can beat every tour,、uh, every team here. Like the top four was the best four teams in the world. So, like, like we did it. Like we did a lower bracket run. We could, we could beat everyone, and we did. And that's that's the mindset I'm gonna come、uh, coming into the grand final against Genji. And yeah, we're just gonna play our game, focus on our fundamentals as always. And yeah, we're gonna smash them, hopefully. <laughs> 我可能并不会说 GNG 它是整个赛事当中最强的一支队伍，因为我会觉得前四的队伍我们都是非常强、非常棒的，我们都有机会去试一试、去争一争。我们也是经历了非常多才来到了这里，我们会在决赛上像往常一样打出我们最好的东西，打出我们做做好我们的基本功的一些东西。所以我觉得我们是可以的。Thank you very much, Luna, for translations, and thank you very much, Party Tech guys. One more time, one more time.、Uh, team Heretic. 大家再次把掌声送给。Thank you for having me, guys. You are amazing, all of you. What a moment for Team Heretics! A 3-0 to make their way to their first global finals. I'm Mimi, joined by Doug and a very special guest, Benji Fishy from Team Heretics. Thanks so much for joining us. Yes, thank you for having me. I thought it's my first time on like actually, yeah, I think it is. It's my first time on an analyst desk. Well, congrats, <laughs> welcome. I, I wanted to start by kind of reflecting on your journey because obviously before Valorant, you had a very successful career in esports. You make the change to this game and you start off grinding in Tier Two, and now. For your first year in Tier One, playing in the international leagues, you've gone on this massive run to now make it to your first Grand Finals in this game. Do, do you ever take the time to, to reflect on that journey, and, and what does it mean to you?、Um, it's pretty special, right? You know, when I first swapped to Valorant,、um, I kind of thought like maybe by this time, you know, I would be in Tier Two, hopefully.、Uh, but <laughs> but now, you know, everything's gone so quick. You know, I looked up to so many of these players, you know, that I'm playing against. And to actually like be in this position where we're beating these teams, we're making grand finals of a Masters event, like it's it's something else. Like it's incredible for me. You,、um, the last time we saw you on the international stage was was rough, right? I, <laughs>、yeah. I want I want to pull you、Let's、back there、list. because you pop over to Madrid, and you guys don't win a single series.、Mm -hmm. What what was the mentality like after that event when you're forced to reset and you still have aspirations to play on a stage like this? You know, what was going through your mind? What were some of the approaches that you guys had to dial into to get to this point where you are now? I think we kind of just took Madrid as like an experience, you know. Like it, for a lot of us, it was our first ever international LAN,、um, and obviously, like we played against Sentinels and Paperx. Like they won the, the the top one team and the third team. So it's like, you know, it, we kind of got a bad draw, I guess.、Um, but I think for a lot of us, it's kind of just getting the experience. I think that's kind of where we are today. I don't think if we had that sort of experience from losing in Madrid, we would be anywhere near here today. So yeah, yeah, it's, it's all like a it's like a snowball. Sure. And to kind of continue to kind of have that reflection, saying like you're surprised you're here at this point.、Yeah. I remember when you were when you were back watching Boaster and Fnatic have all、mm. the success. You'd be watch partying their games. You were a massive fan.、Mm. Now they're out of the tournament, and I, I, you probably didn't see, but Boaster did a halftime interview where he was up there、oh. talking about your team and and、yeah. your journey and what a player you've you've kind of become now.、Mm. What, what's it like to have those roles reverse now and be in this position? Man, that is that is really cool. I mean, yeah, Boas is the player I look up to the most. Like his journey,、um, you know, it was kind of when I first started watching Valorant, where they were they weren't like the greatest. Like they would make these. Oh, they were called chokers, right? Yeah. For a while. The choke nadic yeah, yeah, yeah. narrative. Then, yeah. Like eventually, they started winning, man. Like, and I think that like story of just like Boas just not giving up.、Um, I think it's really really cool, and it's something I inspire to be like.、Um, so yeah, no, I, I appreciate Boas a lot.、Um, he's yeah, I think he's the coolest player. Yeah, yeah, and. I want to reflect now a little bit on this particular game against G2. It's very rare to play a team three times. So for for you and your team, after losing both games and also losing them in, in a fashion, especially with that comeback, the 11-1 down loss、yeah. that you guys suffered, what did it take to both rally the mental to play this team again and to come out with the prep to dominate them the way you did today? 
I mean, if I'm being dead honest, I, I, I knew we were better than them. Like, after that, after the second game, like, sure, we lost when we were 11-2 up, right? Like, we, we shouldn't have done that. But the fact, we even, <laughs> the fact we even got to that point, like, I think that shows that we are just, like, we are sure. better than them. I think it was kind of on us that we didn't close it out. So... Yeah, I think that was the main thing. Like, we we're super confident knowing that we are better than them and that we, we had everything that it took to win today. What what did prep look like? Knowing you were going to play a team for the third time, were you even necessarily focused on what they were going to do and what they were trying to do? Or is it really just like, hey, let's dial up and focus in on our fundamentals and what we know we do well? I think a lot of it is our fundamentals, but I mean, a huge part of why we are winning these games is due to our coaching staff. Mm -hmm. uh, like Boo, Weber, Neil, and Pablo, our analysts, like all of those guys put in like 110%. Like for me, all I need to focus on is kind of just playing the game. They tell me if, if something like well, about what they're going to do, if it's going to affect me, and I can just focus on aiming. Like it, it's, it's as simple as that. And I think that's why we're also like so good. They don't tell us too much, right? Sure. They, they tell us what we need to know. And that's it. Uh, but Boo, you know, they, they know everything about how they're going to play, default, exec, like just everything. And I think that's a huge reason why we're winning. Besides the overall performance you guys have had, I think the other player in particular that has really surprised me, besides, of course, Woot, ha has been Patatek, who, who came in as a sub. He played with you guys before. But I think a lot of people were, were thinking that not having Mini Boo is going to massively change how you played. But it yeah. seems like Patty's just fit back in perfectly. What has he been like as, as a teammate to step up to this task and now perform to this level? I, I really don't think there's many people in the world that could do what Patty has done. Like, his... You know, he, he knows us really well. We know him really well. So it's, it was quite easy to get him back into the team. But he still had to learn a lot of new stuff. Uh, like how we, I don't know, how we changed stuff from since he's, uh, since Miniboo and Woot came in. Um, we had to teach him all that. And the fact that he's playing so good, even while having to learn new stuff, it's just like, it's incredible. And he's, his team play, like his communication, it's all like top tier. So yeah, it's, it's been really, really nice. Woot, you mentioned, and we've got to talk about him because he's taken the tournament by storm. He's yeah. probably one of the fastest players I think I've ever seen. And you've had the privilege of playing with him. You scrim yeah. with him. You spend time with him. But I even saw instances today on that stage where you looked at him and you were like, <laughs> Bro. what in the world was that? <laughs> I remember specifically, it was a jet icebox. It was a jet on icebox. The this, the, yes, with the knives. Yeah. Uh, man, me and me and Ryan's Enes, we were speaking after and we were like, man, that's probably the best clip I've seen in my life. Like, like the fact that I got to witness that live, I'm <laughs> blessed, bro. I'm and blessed. it's like a dime a dozen with some of it's the other rounds he's yeah, pulling off. The, the kid's ridiculous. But of course, with this match wrapping up, that brings us down to our final two teams, Team Heretics and Gen.G, in a best out of five tomorrow. This is the first best of five on an international stage that you've played. Now you have to go up against Gen.G in the same task. They're the only real, I think, really high expectation team that you guys haven't had that chance to go up against who is left in the tournament. What's your expectation for playing Genji? Uh, I think with the form we're in right now, like obviously it's going to be a hard game, but I still believe in every one of my teammates. I believe in us as like a, just a squad. Um, so I believe at this point, I believe we can do anything. Like, I don't know, after being 100 Thieves, after everyone kind of thought they were going to do sure. make grand finals going to win. I just believe we can be anybody at this point. So I'm not scared. We're just going to go in same, you know, same fundamentals, communication, everything like this. And I think that that's what's going to be the difference maker. But yeah, it's, it's going to be hard for sure. Yeah, well, we want to get you some time to prepare for that best out of five tomorrow. But before the grand final even gets underway, you are not going to want to miss the show match in our pre-show. Team China will take on Team International, and they'll play a brand new map. Benji, I know some of the teams got to get a, a little sneak preview of the map. You did? Yeah. I, you can't really say too much, okay. but are, how excited are you to see it? I'm pretty excited. I'm not going to lie. It looks like a pretty fun map. But okay. I don't want to get in trouble, so I'm not going to say anything else. All right. Well, we won't get yes. you in trouble, and we'll let you get on with your prep to get ready for that grand final tomorrow. But, folks, thank you so much for joining us. And, Benji, once again, congratulations, and thanks for the interview. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. All right. Well, that wraps us up for today. Of course, that show match and grand finals here for Master Shanghai are coming your way tomorrow. You won't want to miss it. This is not the first time, not the second, but the third time these two teams have played against each other and G2 have always come out on top. But this time around, it feels like Heretics, however, are actually in championship four. GPG both gonna be taken down, but Woot now fighting three. It's Trenton Jonah P all fall to the wayside. Swing out, Woot, now on for the ace. 
The one tap, the instant shutdown. Jonah P completely and utterly unaware. The knives coming out as he drives the blade into his back. Swing in, leave, dealt with Icy, dead. Showstopper at the ready, set, delivered. Team Heretics, an explosive entry into this lower bracket final. Take down G2, 13 to two. As they continue to just challenge forward, they'll just destroy it. They'll just pick them to pieces. And just, what is that? Whoa. The Dragon Cross is here in the footsteps. Oh! Getting leave to boot. Rienz is absolutely indomitable. Pushing forward, no. gets himself a third. They're all aligned, and he collects the board. Back-breaking round to win here for Heretics to try to shut down G2 and Woot. He finds himself a second, oh! he gets the third. What is that? 13-6, Team Heretics. They get themselves up to match point here in this series. One more map, they go to the grand final. And Patatek now arriving. About to make his presence known. The snake bite gonna be thrown down. Valen, he's so damn low, he's so damn dead! Patatek plays it slow! Whoa, 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 whoa! He's to try to slow things up. Push it! No! He manages to collect two! One HP, certainly impossible, but no! Patatek looking for the ace clutch. Gonna be the slow creep forward! How does he do it? They're all smoked off, but can he find the timing? He absolutely can! Jonah P hearing it, drops down, finds the kill basically midair. Quick to trade it, but now he's dead. Rand's taking him out, looking for a second, he's got it! He's got the third! And the hopes and dreams of G2 have come to an end! Lightning will not strike thrice in Shanghai! G2 are the ascended ones, but heretics refuse to bow at their altar!